Hello people, I am Bharat Acharya. Welcome to a new course on C programming. So today's lecture, we are learning two things. A, the concept of variables and B, the function scanf. Now if you remember, last lecture we had seen printf function. In printf, we display something on the screen. Scanf is just the reverse. It is used by you when you want to accept a user input. A person who knows printf and scanf knows how to work with the user. Scanf, so say for example, you want to do a program to add two numbers or subtract two numbers or multiply two numbers or divide two numbers or five, exchange two numbers or so many. In all of them, you have to accept two numbers from the user and you have to display a result on the screen. So if you know how to accept inputs and display results, you understand this part is common in all the programs. Then what changes just is it? just whether you want to add or subtract or multiply or find the highest or etc. But the input part and output part is the same for all programs. So you've seen the output already, we've seen printf, today we are seeing scanf. Now when you do scanf, you accept a value from the user. As you accept the value, you have to store it somewhere, correct? That value is stored in a variable. That is why we learn scanf and variables together in one lecture because both go hand in hand. When you do a scanf, you have a value, you have to store it somewhere or the other. So the first thing I'm going to show you is how to define integers, what is the concept of integer, how does it work with memory, how to create a value, etc. What is its mem uh, variable value, what is the variable address, how to access both of them. Then I'll show you how to print variables on the screen. See, your printf statement will start becoming a little more tricky. If you remember printf last lecture was so cute, it was just a text. Now you need placeholders, you need format specifiers to decide what kind of value you want to display. Of course, I'm going to teach you. Don't think it's complicated. It's not. All of this is very simple once you just wrap your brain around it. I will do so many examples that this will become second nature and that's how it should be. You should be able to type these commands at any point of time because they're used in every program. See, it's getting even bigger, even trickier, but at the same time, all of this will become simple as you keep learning it. Anyway, and you'll be able to display good outputs. Then I'll show you how to use scanf. Then we'll go ahead and do some good programs. Like I said, accept two numbers from the user and do manipulations on them, many manipulations. Add, subtract, multiply, divide, quotient, remainder, etc. Then finally, I'm going to show you what are the ranges of integers. Yeah, there are various types of integers. There is int, signed, unsigned, there is long, signed, unsigned, there is short, signed, unsigned. Yeah, 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 yeah. People get a little uh, distracted from the main topic when they learn this. And that's why I've seen, unfortunately, so all this literature I've seen normally comes right in the beginning of the topic in any textbook. When they start explaining integers, all the various types of integers, and halfway through that table, student is bored and has lost interest. This is not C programming. This is just theory that these are various types of variables. C programming was everything that we did before this in this video, in the lecture, of course, which I'm going to explain. So that's why I've kept this right at the end. This is knowledge, this theory knowledge. But having said this, what you'll be using most of the times in all the experience that I have and for all the program that you do as a beginner, this is what you'll be using in. This is just theory knowledge you need to know. So I'm going to tell you and I won't keep it so dry that, okay, this is the range. I will show you this also with a program. We'll run programs, we'll define each data type and test them to their limit till where they can hold the value and after which they start getting garbage value. Anyway, so that's going to be the whole scope of today's lecture. Uh, the entire lecture will be available on my website, bharatacharyaeducation.com. The link is given down below. Click on the link, open my website, register yourself as a user. You'll see a list of courses over there. I teach lots of subjects. Right at the bottom, you will see C programming is the latest course that's being developed. Click on the course, click on subscribe button, start learning. Many people already have. By the time you reach this lecture, you know how to accept an input, you know how to display an output, a user generated output, and you know how to do basic manipulations, which means your journey of a programmer has already begun. If you reach this stage, you've got your basic tools. Without even learning anything more than this, you'll be able to do a lot of programs by yourself. And of course, I'm going to teach you many more things. But I'm just telling you, your journey begins by the time you reach this stage. So don't sit back and wait for all the videos to come up and then I will decide when I want to learn. No, this is what you've been doing. First sem, you did that, you waited for second sem, and first year gone, second year gone, third year gone. Now placements are right around the corner. Don't waste time. Get on with it, okay? Wherever you can, start learning. You need to be good at at least one language in terms of programming, okay? So the whole lecture will be there on my website. Hope to see you there. Wish you all the best. Do well. Be continuing.